you missed the train again. And the digital display said another train was on its way, but when it arrived, it was full. Another pulled up at the platform, but the doors didn't open. Then your ticket expired. There weren't any more trains for a while. Life isn't a box of chocolates. It's a series of trains, stations, and doors. But when it comes to youth unemployment in Europe, many people are struggling to get through the first barrier of education. They just can't afford a ticket to ride. When I was at university, my annual fee was maximum 500, 500 euros for the public for, in a public university. Now some people need to pay 2,500, 3,000 euros, which for many families in Spain, this may sound not a lot of money in other parts of Europe, but in Spain this is a huge amount of money, which, which makes it impossible for, for, some, for, for some young people to access higher education, and this at the end of the day will affect the labour market. 5.2 million young people are currently unemployed in the European Union. That's a scandal. Youth unemployment in Europe is running at more than twice the adult rate. Just under 25% of young Europeans, that's about one in four without a job. But the number rises to more than 50%, one in every two young people in countries such as Spain and Greece. Probably it's difficult to understand the social consequence of this. Uh, I have the half of my friends in the university are trying to find new jobs only with the opportunity to go out of the country. Go out to your country and try to build a better future. It's a fantastic uh, choice. But now it starts to be an obligation. When young people do work, they don't usually have stable jobs. They work on temporary contracts, if they have a contract at all. We are experimenting actually with young people regarding having a more precarious job market. That's very clear. This is something that will affect their pension, for instance, and they will affect the whole, uh, the, the, the whole, the whole working life. Uh, that's why I think we should guarantee that young people have the same rights as their parents when it comes to the labour market. It must be decent works work for decent jobs for, for the young people. They have to, to earn so much money that they can build up an own future, that they can live with their own family in their home. We need to care for the young generation that this generation will not be lost for the labour market for a long time. So we need a youth guarantee to bring them into a job after finalizing school or studies within a short time. With youth guarantees, no one is left behind. Each country ensures that every young European is offered a job or an apprenticeship, traineeship or other further education at least four months after leaving school or their last employment. The Youth Guarantee is a program, a program where administration needs to engage with young people um, in universities, in schools, to guarantee that they are able, that they are not left alone, that they are able to continue their studies or to find a first job. It is a very pity that uh, the Youth Guarantee which is a very, very good um, um, tool, uh, does not work in the best way. The council stated that the youth guarantee failed. Uh, and it was clear that it will fail. It's not working properly. Uh, I'm coming from Spain, where we have a huge problem with youth unemployment. Uh, the government has basically taken the money for, of the youth guarantee for fiscal benefits to companies, which we know already doesn't work and which contradicts actually the recommendations of the European Commission. You need structures to invest that money. It's senseless to get money from EU for youth guarantee if you cannot bring it on the road. If you don't have a program to find a proper job, you only give tax benefits, you don't accompany the, the young person to have a proper uh, professional career. And this is what is happening at the moment. They have a job, precarious job, temporary job for some months, and then it's gone. For us, we had some doubts with the approach of a guarantee because you cannot guarantee employment. Employment is linked to the economic situation, it's linked to uh, employers' capacity to create jobs. The European Youth Guarantee was supposed to inject some adrenaline into youth employment, but the market is still sedated and no sign of recovery can be seen approaching. 
part of the reason is the lack of funding. According to, uh, to the ILO statistics, uh, we would need like four more uh, uh, times the money that has been allocated until now. That's clear, it's not, uh, it's not funded. But what, what, but what worries me most is that what we have at the moment uh, allocated for that is being misused. We need to make sure that the money we are right now uh, gave for the European funds to fight youth unemployment will be continued after 2016. We have to increase the pressure on all these uh, member states who did not make their job yet. This is the Commission's role? Of course, from the Commission and uh, by uh, several uh, initiatives which uh, will also be uh, going through the Parliament then and get also our pressure because we have to make a big uh, 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 shouting uh, against all member states uh, to take that problem very, very, very serious. Are you optimistic that they will? Uh, I'm not pessimistic. Conservative estimates indicate that the Youth Guarantee needs four times more funding to stand a real chance of succeeding. The cost to member states could be 21 billion euros, but the cost of not acting in economic terms alone is estimated by the European Foundation for Living and Working Conditions to be 150 billion euros. If young people in Europe were a bank, they would probably be given the cash, but maybe they don't have the influence of banks. The European Union paid for savings the European banks with 3,200 billion euro and uh, that we also only want to take 8 billion euro to fight youth unemployment. It's a shame, it's ridiculous. We have to answer our one question and the next commission have to answer our one question. Is we um, fixed the banks during the last years because we said they are too big to fail. And probably it's true, too big to fail. My question is, the new generations are too big to fail? You can see a, a very wide diversity of situations across countries. The unemployment rate is far beyond 20%, for example, in Greece and in Spain. Uh, but on the other end, there are countries where it's below 5%, like Germany and Austria. Youth unemployment is less than 10% in several European member states. Countries such as Austria have developed a different approach to work, which better matches education, skills and the real needs of the workplace. Produce employability to make young people able to work and find a job. And this is done in Austria and this now is the model for Europe with the so-called dual system. The dual system means there is a professional education in school and at the same time and parallel in the same week, several days school and several in a company already working and being trained on the job. The promotion of um, being in a position and a possibility to create your own business, being your own boss, is something that will maybe mobilize some, some of our uh, young generation uh, in order to overcome the difficult situation we are facing today. Social business, which has the word business inside, which means, yes, you can make profits. It is a business, you are an entrepreneur, but it has a big sense behind. It is a social sense, it's an environmental sense. The young people like that most. They are looking for jobs, not only for getting uh, wages and uh, getting money. No, they want to have sense behind. And we will find the mix of a social uh, impact by doing uh, social business enterprise is one of the big tools of the future. We want to promote uh, the idea of creating uh, this spirit of entrepreneurship will help to create new businesses and uh, new employment in Europe. Do you see a difference between how youth unemployment and employment in general is stimulated from the SMEs from startup level? The focus on education uh, is the reason why we think, of course, will make a big difference in that. I think there we tackle mainly young people and that's where we really believe uh, we can make a difference. Matching skills and jobs, trying to find um, ways and means of doing that within countries because mobility is not in the EU, even for, for work and even from countries with high unemployment, is still quite low. So even though there may be jobs in country A, that's no guarantee that those qualified from country B will migrate to get those jobs. The people are there with the education on that side, 
and the market needs people here. And so we have a dramatic unemployment problem in Europe with millions of people without job. But we have at the same time two million jobs. We do not find people who do the work. Swedish statistician Hans Rosling said, to get away from poverty, you need several things at the same time. School, health and infrastructure. Those are the public investments. And on the other side, you need market opportunities, information, employment and human rights. Social partnership between the representatives of working uh, uh, people and of the companies is the uh, best way to get both interests into one direction on the labour market. If the country specific recommendations, if we could have uh, what we would call the, the social and employment requirements or benchmarks uh, hammered home as strongly as the economic ones, and the Commission can do that, then I think we could make progress. And nobody is saying that we can solve that in two, three years, of course not. But we need to, to start taking the necessary steps, steps to do it. And at the moment we're taking all the wrong decisions. I hope we move very, very quickly. I'm very disappointed that there were so much council meetings, high-level meetings, discussing what has to be done. And it needed really years, five years now, until they start to move, to act, really to improve the situation of young people. And we don't have much time. Each year we wait and we do not act really. We lose another young generation. Even uh, in, a, in a dangerous sense uh, for all our society, because populists could use this uh, disappointed generation for other purposes and we have to help. We are responsible, the, the member state, the European level, we are responsible for a young generation not to be lost. The European Commission has the chance of a lifetime. It has to put Europe's youth on the right track and it has to do it quickly, before the trains stop running and the lights go out for a generation.